In this modules exercise, we're gonna be taking a closer look at mixer signal flow. When we do create the track types, either an audio or a software instrument track, when we start to think about routing and all the myriad of possibilities, what exactly can we accomplish? And so that's kind of the background that we're gonna be working on today. So we know that these are all going to be outputting all the way to the output bus in Logic Pro's case, it's called the stereo output. The same can be said for the auxiliary tracks that are created if they're created within the program. So let's say you created two buses that are being sent to auxiliary one and auxiliary two. Those two are going to be summoned up and routed to the output bus. Again, the stereo output. So what I want to do right now is take a look at the channel strip and understand its three main routing points. The input at the top of the channel strip, the output, which is right at the bottom, the stereo output, and we can route this so it goes somewhere else. And there are several examples that we will go over. And then, of course, the sends themselves and there's a whole nother universe of possibilities when we start to talk about sends so let's look at the three main routing points within a channel strip okay so really to make this concrete i have to hide a couple of tracks so i'm gonna hit Control h and we're just looking at this audio track let me go ahead and play this back for you just so we have some orientation let's go When I go up to the main menu bar and hover over track and I select show output track key command shift command M, I am now looking at the stereo output that of course is in the mixer, but I'm seeing it within the tracks area. And so this can be very beneficial for many reasons. So again, as mentioned, track 27, it is in fact being routed to the stereo out. There are instances, there are situations, whether it's creative, whether it's pragmatic for troubleshooting, where you will have to change the routing. Now at your disposal, you can use the input, the sends, or the output. So let me show you one example of how you can hack the system to benefit your Logic Pro workflow. So I'm going to resample myself. I'm gonna create another audio track right now. So at the moment, I have the source track, which I let you hear a second ago. And then I have what I would call here the resample. And why this is important is because you may have lag issues. You may have a plugin that's kind of questionable when you actually bounce a track. And so you're going to need a way to burn this in real time. So let's say we apply an amplifier to this specific signal. And now it sounds like this. But you don't wanna utilize the processing of the bass. Of course, you could bounce it to audio. I just wanna show you another method should you ever need it. So instead of routing this to the stereo output, I'm gonna tell Logic, actually, I would like to route this to bus 18. This is an arbitrary number. I'm just picking any number. And so then now, instead of this playing and being routed to the summing track, in this case, the stereo output, that's where everything goes when we bounce a session, we're going to be routing this to bus 18. And so I'll do something clever here by making the input of the resample track bus 18. And so if you really start to think about it, it really is a wiring job. I'm inputting something here and I'm sending it over here for creative or technical purposes. And so right now, when I hit record, I am taking in effect this region, this track and the processing therein, and I'm going to burn it into this track. Another benefit here is that I could make changes to this track and I can record those as well. So let's try this out. And we'll make sure this is record enabled. 
it is. And so let's hit record. So not only did I capture the effect that was previously on that track, but I also was writing the fader of track number 27 or the track that you're seeing at the very top of the screen. So this is one example of maximizing on the routing points within the channel strip. I used the stereo output and I sent that to bus 18 and then I used the input of what I called the resample track, and I also assigned that to bus 18. And now I'm able to create something like this. Isn't that awesome? So this is what I would call a resample technique. It's fantastic. Lots of people utilize it in different ways. Go ahead and check that out. Let me just show you one more example. In a previous video, I did show you the relationship between a track creating a bus and how that automatically also creates an auxiliary within Logic Pro. And so this is something else that you can use to your benefit. How? Well, you see this drummer track here? Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to sum all of the various parts and send them to an auxiliary for further processing. So let's listen to this, see what it sounds like. All right, so let us pretend that we wanted this to sound bigger, better, fuller. From a subtle point of view, we could simply just create a bus and apply a little bit of parallel compression. And that can be helpful and that can apply a little bit of grit. Go ahead and check this out now. So this is before. So I would call that a bump in production. It actually sounds better. But something else that you can do is quite literally route the entire thing to that same bus. So if we go into the tracks mixer, you'll see that I created this auxiliary track a second ago, and I'll call it PC. So it's easy to look at. And so again, I'll control click create track so we can look at this within the tracks area. And I'll hit X to close the mixer. And so this time, rather than sending a duplicate signal just the way like I did before, this time I'm actually gonna send the entire signal. So everything is being routed and processed by this PC parallel compression track. So again, I will select the stereo output. I'll head over to bus and send this to bus number one. So everything within this track stack, all of these various parts are being sent to the drummer. And so now we have essentially taken all of the parts here, routed them over to bus one. Let's see what this looks and sounds like. Okay, so I'll let you be the judge. I'm gonna go ahead and route this back to the stereo output. How does this sound? Compared to this. I would say there's a big difference, wouldn't you? Okay, go ahead and play with the three main routing points. Very important for you to understand how to use this methodology. It will get you out of a lot of trouble. It will help you in many, many, many dilemmas. So go ahead and try this out. Give me any and all feedback. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next module. Cheers.